Tropical camping on a deserted island on a speedboat? Hmm, not sure how this is going to work out. As you probably know by now, our episodes start with a story. And this one starts at about 5,000 feet approaching Key West. As I looked out my window, I saw this, well, this trench through the ocean that ended in a, an island that looked like it was cleaved in half. And for some reason at that moment, I knew I needed to go there. Where is this island? What's it called? And can we even get there? I think it's time for some research. I was surprised at how little I'd found on the internet. But with a little digging, I discovered that this island was called Destroyer Key. That's an odd name. I wonder why. With some more research, I found the real story. And it's fascinating. Hmm. According to this website, Conquer the Keys, in 1960, a destroyer had lost its radar and ran aground, pushing up two huge windrows and making this two-piece cleaved-in-half island out of pure coral. And looking at that straight, deep channel cutting up into it, you can almost see the ship losing its radar and running aground. And local legend says that this huge destroyer was out running a Russian submarine at the beginning of the Cold War. I have so many questions, but one thing's for sure. Sarah and I are gonna be inbound to destroy your key. And with the shallow depth of water and the need for speed, the 440 MTI is gonna be perfect. At least for us anyway. So we had done the research and made a pretty good game plan. Our plan was to camp out on the island, do a catch and cook, and do a full exploration. But first, we have to pack the boat. And sorry to say, kids, this tent that we're bringing, it's only good for two. It sucks, but you guys are gonna have to be the adults and stay behind and take care of the house. As Sarah and I go on an adventure of a lifetime, we'll be back soon. This is a family vacation made for two. And after a hundred mile an hour trip west of Big Pine and well, west of Key West, we were there. It took us about well, three minutes. See if it'll set. All right, you guys, here we are. This is awesome. We just landed, literally landed on Destroyer Key. Checking the props in Key West girl language simply means I'm going pee. After setting the anchor, it was finally time to put on the aqua socks and explore a little bit. Now we had no idea where we were gonna set the tent that night, but to me, that's one of the coolest parts about camping, is not knowing and figuring it out as you go. On a side note, a few years back we were camping up in the Everglades. And we set up a little bit late. Sure enough, we woke up that next morning to find ourselves parked right next to a saltwater crocodile slide. A local fisherman ended up stopping by on the beach that morning and basically confirmed with us that there was a 13-foot saltwater crocodile in the area. He'd actually hooked into it just weeks before, just yards from our tent. 
and since that camping trip on the coastal Everglades and even down south in the Keys, Sarah and I have always been, well, cautious. Not scared, but just cautious, educated, and aware. So I'm about to go for an evening swim, and this guy pops up. Go ahead, show us your fin. There's a, there's a nice sized shark, literally 10 feet from shore. And I'm waiting for his dorsal to break the surface. I'm literally like three feet from shore. And my last encounter with a shark? Yeah, I'm happy to have both hands and quick reflexes. Where were we? A little distracted there. Oh yeah, we were looking for a camping spot on this deserted little island called Destroyer Key. I'm not so sure about the east side of this cleaved island. It's pretty rough with coral, not very flat, and there's an osprey nest right above us. Let's try the west side. Cool area though, nonetheless. You learn very quickly when doing a lot of camping out of, well, a scratch-free, very polished speedboat. You can never have too many small anchors. And I found that the Fortress FX7, which is only four pounds, and the FX11, which is seven pounds, hold extremely well for their size and work well for additional anchors on this boat. Of course, it's always smart to have plenty of rope for your shore ties as well. If you can manage to get all four corners secured, you're doing well. And now for a restful night, you just hope for no wind and little tide. Now with the boat secured properly, it was time to do the exploration of the west side of the island. It looked beautiful. We were so excited. Hmm, that's interesting. What do you think of this part of the island, hon? Is where the kayakers come in and out? Well, it could be kayakers or <laughs> there are saltwater crocs around here. Seriously? Yep. No, thank This is where he comes up and goes, yum, yum. What is that right there? You're a bigger snack. Yeah, but honey, you're far tastier. <laughs> Let's see if one of us is slower. Hold on, don't move. This place is littered. The ground is literally moving with crabs. Look at this, we are surrounded by hermit crabs everywhere. Everywhere you look, they're all over the place. Look at that one. The ground is just moving with hermit crabs. <laughs> literally just moving, it's anywhere I point the camera. Now I've seen plenty of hermit crabs in my life but most of the time they're underwater. But never have I seen so many, and so many crawling all over the ground. It was both really, really cool, and a little creepy at the same time. All right, so what do you think about just staying on the boat? 100% okay with it. In the end, we've always wanted to pitch the tent on the 440, and this was the perfect situation. The ground was rock solid coral, it wasn't very flat, and it was absolutely covered in hermit crabs. Some of them are pretty damn big. We didn't know the environment very well either. But the biggest thing was I couldn't see the boat from the campsite. With changing tides and winds, you have to be able to see your boat throughout the night. So, 440 it is. This is cool.
cool out here, huh? Look at this hunt. Portuguese man of war jellyfish. Oh, wait a second. It's actually not a jellyfish. It's a siphonophore, which is a colony of specialized organisms that group together to make the animal, also known as zooids. Hmm. Might want to be careful with these. They punch one heck of a sting. They have tentacles that are about 165 feet long, normally only about 30 though, and they do wash up on the beach and they're really common in Florida. If you do get stung, rinsing it with vinegar can actually help. It's a mild acid that can prevent the stingers from firing into your skin. And because I knew you were wondering, no, peeing on a jellyfish sting does not help. It can actually make things worse, and so can fresh water. Well, after a little bit of a knockdown drag out with the tent, which I'm not going to show you because it's embarrassing, we popped it out. Pop tent. There you have it. I'm not sure if anybody's ever put a tent on a 440. Can't say that anymore, can ya? Honey, what happens if if we get a little active at night and roll over into the water? You're gonna be in a tent in the water. I'll have a knife on me. <laughs> Just don't stab me. We're gonna have to sleep with these, honey. No promises. With the boat secured and the tent out, it was time to see if I could catch some dinner. After all, this is supposed to be a catching cook. The pressure's on, but I really hope Sarah brought some backup ramen. I'm just so fortunate that I have a wife that doesn't really make fun of me if I don't catch anything. It really means a lot to me. Honey, I got some good news and some bad news. It was the good news. Good news is I caught a fish. <laughs> okay, so we're eating. The bad news is only one of us is eating tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. These things are so good. Unfortunately, <laughs> this guy is not quite the size we're looking for. These need to be 10 inches. Hold them up like you're proud. It's your first fish. Wow. This thing's a monster, the size huh? Size of your head. I'm fairly confident that this is the first catch and release fish off any MTI. Fishing with the five hundreds. That could be a series. Well, soon it was time for me to acknowledge that I was no osprey. I'm hoping my wife has a plan B, or it's going to be day fasting for sure. Well, technically night fasting. You sure it's not gonna light those towels on fire? How's your beanbag chair? How's your. What else? And we have regular ramen. Makes me forget that I. Ooh. Alright, I think we're ready. Unfortunately, honey. It's jerky instead of yellowtail. Better than fish. Maybe I do this on purpose. Maybe I'm purposely not a good fisherman. Oh, that's good. That is good. It's so quiet. So quiet. It's beautiful. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Technically, this is how to live. All I can do, I've got memories from Well, after one of the best camping meals I've ever had, and enough sodium glutamate to kill an elephant, it was time for a campfire before we hit the hay. How's the five-star accommodations, honey? There's nothing better than this. I might fall asleep. The boat is right over there. I'll show you. You just climb over this little hill here. And uh, here's our little pop tent for the night. Yeah. Yeah, 
ever get that eerie feeling you're being watched? Well, we were at the campfire playing with crabs. The wind changed direction by 90 degrees. It was pushing out of the north. My port bow line was not holding it out far enough. So I had to wrap it around a rock outcropping with some chafing gear. It's certainly not optimal, but it should work. One thing's for sure, I'm not getting any sleep tonight. Okay, honey, let's say that we roll into the water tonight in this tent, and we are in the water drowning in a tent together. Where's your knife? Right here. We're done. We're dead. <laughs> you'll save We're me. Dead. We're done. You'll dead. save me. I'm gonna save you because mine is on me right here. Round two. Honey, where's your knife? Okay. We're gonna get out of this tent if we roll over. Okay, I'll sleep with it like this, but let's just hope I don't have any dreams. No, honey, you should have the knife in your... I have mine actually in my pocket of my shorts. I don't... They don't make girls' bed shorts with pockets. At least well, not the kind of Just wearing. put them in your pants. Just put the knife in your pants. <laughs> There's so many things I want to say to that. That's the moon. The moon is legit tonight. The wind's picked up a little bit out of the north. We're a little concerned because, well, we're only like three feet from shore and it's pretty hard shoreline. It's not pretty hard, it's really hard. It's all coral. Are you gonna need a paint job after this camping trip? <laughs> Spaceship, there's aliens. Spaceship and the aliens? They're coming to get us. I hope so. Sweet dreams, spaceships and aliens. <laughs> The wind finally laid down around midnight, and it gives a pretty good night's sleep, dreaming of, well, aliens and spaceships. But I was waiting for that first little bit of light so I could head out fishing and redeem myself from the night before. And to me, one of my favorite things about camping is waking up in the morning to a fresh cup of, well, instant coffee. To a new day. And I think that's what's special about camping. It teaches you that everything is relative. And so you just enjoy everything. It's a lot easier for him, isn't it, honey? Nice, I got one. All right. <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> Come on, little guy. Hold him up, honey. So we're gonna put this guy back because there's rules and regulations, obviously, and we don't break them. But I just wanted a little demonstration for my wife. If it was zombie day, and if we had to survive, question I have for you guys is on Z-Day do you go to an island? Think about that. Can zombies swim? This little mangrove snapper. Pretty cool.
cool, Thank huh? Thank you. He is too small, again. But we're getting bigger and bigger every day, especially if you hold it close to the camera. <laughs> Look at those fangs. Take a good look at that. Mercury, I do have a suggestion. It would be good if you uh, decide to mold in a coffee holder for these 500s. That would be nice. You could throw in a rod holder too. That would be rod epic. Rod holder, coffee holder, cup table. I'd like to see you fillet a fish on top of them. Cup holder, rod, rod holder, and a bait table. Once we determined I could catch fish and the anchor line, but supply the family with food on Z-Day, it was time to go back to the island. Sarah wanted to pick up trash, and I wanted to study these hermit crabs. What do they eat? There are so many of them. What is the biomass that all of these hermit crabs are surviving on? I know they're omnivores, but there just doesn't seem to be a ton of food on the island, either plants or proteins. They must be getting it from washed up debris. And then I thought, Wait a second, there's another creature on this island that happens to be a pretty messy eater. Hmm, let's go check that out. Honey, we don't need to take home a whole dumpster. Just saying. I mean. Well, we do have a really big boat. Just saying. Hmm, I was right. I saw this osprey eating up here the day before as we were checking out the east side of the island. Sure enough, he's a messy eater and he's given these guys a bit of his leftovers. And it makes sense. This coupled with the vegetation and other washed up carcasses gives enough biomass for this island to be swarming with hermit crabs. And as I walk back down to the boat, I do have this creepy question. If you were to wash up here from a shipwreck and be dead, how long are you gonna last on this island in one piece? My guess is not very. But on a good note, you're giving back to nature in a cool way. It's better than cremation, I suppose. I guess the test of a good camping trip is, how fast do you want to leave? We woke up that morning, we were in no rush. But as the sun crested, we knew it was time for lunch. And we knew I wasn't going to catch it, at least legally. But before this romantic surprise dock and dine on the coast of Key West, I think we're due for an adrenaline dump.
Yeah, I, I did. I put titanium in one of my episodes. What's done is done. And just like that, our camping trip is over. We pull into Geiger Key Marina, where I surprise Sarah with a lunch. That is not ramen noodles. This will be a year. Look how far we have come. We cannot stop there and leave our work on time. Gonna move these mountains one by one. I notice it says they're Dr. Dish. <laughs> kind of like catch and cook. Couldn't complete the mission. Our vision's clear. Focus is locked on time. That's a cap for Destroyer Key. I'd like to thank everybody for watching sincerely. Thank you. If you guys like this content, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and we'll make more. And if you're looking for a good true story adventure to watch, go ahead and check out our epic ocean voyage turns into world record disaster, New York City to Miami. It's got a ton of content. It'll make you laugh, cry, and cheer. Until next time, this is Mike and Sarah from How to Live. Boat safe, boat happy, over and out.